special meeting of the Board of Commissioners. Uh, today is date February the 1st, 2018, 5.30 p.m. I join the police call roll. Commissioner Ernst? Here. Commissioner Engel? Here. Commissioner Rollins? Here. Commissioner Goldison? Here. Here. Commissioner Wright? Here. Uh, the purpose of the meeting this evening is to hear presentations from uh, golf course uh, architects that responded to our RFP. And uh, in the order of uh, selection, the uh, first presenter is the uh, Nicholas Design Group. And as anybody else in the audience who may be presenting, we're going to allow 30 minutes uh, for each presenter. Uh, and we we'll ask uh, at uh, 20 up, we'll, uh, we'll have a little uh, buzzer go off 20, 25 after. Uh, so we'll have five remaining minutes for questions and answers. And at this time, I'd like to introduce the Nichols Design Group team. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to introduce our outstanding team of local consultants. <clears throat> um, I'm John Sanford. I'm the owner of Sanford Golf Design and also the president of the American Society of Golf Course Architects. Um, my firm will manage the project with all the consultants through, through design and construction, <clears throat> and we will collaborate with Nicholas Design on the, the golf course design. Um, I'd like to go ahead and, and introduce the team um, and the organizational chart. Yeah, right here. Perfect. Um, so we'll, we'll start on the left side here with, with Kimley Horn here tonight. Uh, from that firm is Jonathan Hay. Um, Kimley Horn, as you probably know, is a, a, a very well-known engineering, land planning, and landscape architecture firm. Um, in this particular project, Jonathan will be heading up any of the land planning and landscape architecture for the project. Um, next is Ingenuity. Um, engineering, permitting, and survey. Here we have uh, Lisa Tropecki representing Ingenuity on the, on the engineering side. And also we have Andre Raymond um, here rep on the surveying side. Um, and I should note that Ingenuity is a certified minority business enterprise in the state of Florida. Uh, next up is our clubhouse architect, uh, Mr. Brian Idle from Peacock and Lewis. I think you folks are familiar with Brian at this point. Uh, we're actually going to give him a speaking part tonight, so I, I know he's excited about that. Um, on the far end is the Pignato Group Irrigation Consultants. Mike Pignato and his group have um, designed over 300 ir golf course irrigation systems um, in, their, in their career. Um, and last but certainly not least, is the Nicholas Design Team. Um, and uh, probably needless to say, but the Nicholas Design is recognized around the world as the top golf course architecture brand in the business. Um, here with the Nicholas Group is Chad Getz, Design Associate. And we also have Scott Tolley, Director of Communications. Scott will say a few words. And then Ray Ball, uh, Director of Business Development. <clears throat> um, let's go one more, please. So, we, this team has deep roots in Palm Beach County. We've all been here, lived here, grown up here for decades. And because of those roots, we've all worked together on various projects over the years. A couple of examples of that would be Trump Golf Links at Ferry Point that my firm and the Nicholas firm uh, collaborated on. Um, it's a reclamation of a landfill in the Bronx, very successful project. On the top right, North Palm Beach Country Club, a public facility that uh, Nicholas and Peacock and Lewis have worked on, and Nicholas <coughs> is actually working on that clubhouse now. Uh, Banyan K Resort and Golf in West Palm Beach was a, a recent redesign that we did in collaboration with Mr. Nicholas, and then um, Naples Beach Club over in Naples, of course, uh, we, it was another collaborative project that we did just a year ago, a redesign of an existing golf course. <clears throat> um, and then just another list of team experience, all projects that our team has collaborate, collaborated on previously. Um, so with that introduction, I'd like to introduce Scott Tolley. 
to talk to you about the Nicholas brand and vision. Hope you don't mind if I stand back by here. This is going to actually hold me up a little bit. So, um, yeah, I, I was telling our group I apologize if I start to speak in tongues or start rambling or something, but um, it's not like a low blood sugar, even though this is usually my early bird dinner time. So, you have to excuse me on that. But actually, I just returned late last night from a, a trip to Malaysia and Singapore. We flew 45 hours and we were on the ground for 36 hours. And I don't tell you that just to feel sorry for my activity because there was a huge storm we were coming back. About four hours from landing, the pilot comes back and goes with Mr. Nicholas and he goes, uh, Mr. Nicholas, he goes, are you looking forward to, to getting home? And he goes, I always look forward to getting home and to being home. I tell you that because as John was nice enough to say, we are the global leader in golf course design. We've done 415 courses in 45 countries and this spring will be 40 states. Um, but nothing gives us greater satisfaction, joy, excitement, enthusiasm, motivation than working right here at home in our own Palm Beach County backyard. And it is our backyard. Um, Mr. Nicholas has been a resident of Florida for, well, since 1965. So I might not be great at math, but that's a long time. So, um, and, and while he's known as sort of Ohio's favorite son, he's a Floridian. Um, if I can get you to move on there, there we go. You know, they, as I said, they've lived in Palm Beach County for 53 years. I, you know, they're not snowbirds. They're not seasonal residents or someone who says, I, I winter in Palm Beach. Um, they live here year round. They're Floridians. And so we're honored, humbled, and honestly thrilled to have this opportunity to work with you on the renaissance of the Boca National. Um, growing the game and giving back to the game is at the foundation of everything we do at Nicholas. Jack's not only the greatest champion in the history of the game, um, his iconic status, his name, his brand transcend that game. He was at the forefront of creating the PGA Tour 50 years ago. He founded the prestigious Memorial Tournament, one of the PGA Tour's top events. He was instrumental in getting golf back into the Olympics after a 112 year, 111 year absence and he helped create and grow the first team. Go ahead. He's the only person in history to win both the Congressional Gold Medal and the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is our nation's highest honor for a civilian. And I've actually got some replicas of the Congressional Gold Medal that I will be handing out because they make great ball markers for the new Open <laughs> National. All right? I want you know that there will be parting gifts. It's like a game show. Um, but in this year, he's actually going to add the trifecta. In June, he's going to be getting the Lincoln Medal. So um, pretty distinguished company there. But you can also see he's also used his platform to get back to the state of Florida, and they have recognized him for it. He was Florida's athlete of the century, but also he was honored by the House of Representatives as a distinguished Floridian. Go ahead, Ray. Now, I'm not going to go through all this, but you know we are a, a Florida-based, North Palm Beach-based company. Um, our brand, while its foundation, its roots is in the game of golf, it transcends transcends the game to the life and lifestyle that surrounds golf. You know we have beverages, we have shoes, we have ice cream. Um, we even have a Jack Nicholas Golden Bear Grill, which if anyone has flown in and out of Fort Lauderdale Terminal Three, you may have seen it. It's actually the most successful restaurant out of the 300 plus that our partners Delaware North have done nationwide and in all airports. So um, we're very proud of that. In addition, Jack and Barbara Nicholas and our company, we're very philanthropic. We tie in philanthropy to a lot of our businesses. And you may have heard of the Nicholas Children's Healthcare Foundation, or if not, you may have heard of Nicholas Children's Hospital in Miami. And since there's a Nicholas Jones Health System, now there are 16 Nicholas outpatient centers from Miami to Vero Beach and over to Naples. So they are truly leaving an impact in the state of Florida. Um, Raymond? Yeah. I would argue there's probably not a more meaningful platform or something that gives Mr. Nicholas more joy than golf course design. And while some would prefer to debate the importance of his record 18 majors, he might prefer to argue the lasting legacy of his 300 golf courses that he's personally been involved with worldwide. He's also proud of the fact that over the years he's mentored so many designers, design associates, and we're proud that there are 26 past and present members of the ASGCA, which is the most prestigious 
collection of architects in the world, 26 past and present that have worked with Jack, including Mr. John Sanford and Chad Getz, who to this day is our only member who's earned membership into the European society as well. So he's very global. Um, we also consider it a badge of honor to say that 153 Nicholas Design courses have hosted over a thousand professional tournaments worldwide. Meanwhile, more than 100 or close to 100 have been ranked in the top 100 nationally or internationally. So there's a true balance of beauty and strategy there. And in a couple of weeks, one publication is going to announce that of the four golf developments that are honored for 2017, as far as the 2017 golf development of the year, two of the four are Nichols. So it comes down to a business and a brand that provides the confluence of beauty, strategy, lasting impact, and legacy. One way you create a legacy is by paying it forward. Teach the next generation so they're better than you are. And that's what we do with the, can you jump ahead there to the academy there? But there we go. Um, to the academy room, we've got over 25 Jack Nicholas golf, golf academies spread across 10 countries. We use a sort of an easy to digest uh, methodology based on if anyone is old enough in this room to have seen Golf My Way, which is the largest selling instructional video of all time. That's the methodology, um, but state of the art and we, we go in areas to help grow the game, introduce the kids, make it easier, fun for people. Okay, Raymond. Um, but no one in the industry provides more depth of resources, support, and back of the shop assistance before, during, and after construction than Nicholas. All our clients, uh, including Boca, will get their own specific web page within nicholas.com, which gets about a million page views annually. Um, on the social media side, we have an audience that reaches about a million. Um, sometimes I'm the, the person behind the curtain, you know, pulling the strings, but uh, we use that for our clients to help support their efforts and promote them. Um, I'm a former sports writer uh, before I got a real job 20 years ago, and, uh, but uh, I've got great relations in the media industry, so we help all of our clients before, during, and after construction to connect them with media. We help to um, collaborate on press releases and distribute them. Um, and that's locally, regionally, or nationally. Um, we have a proprietary software at Nicholas that helps us streamline the process, but also we use some state-of-the-art technology and have partnerships that allow us to do 3D models, animation, and flyovers, which we will do with Boca National. So if you've got meetings, if you've got a market to a group, we can create flyovers of a golf hole before a shovel ever hits dirt. And it is so realistic, you can actually play it on simulators and hit balls, so it's terrific. And then we've got a partner program that allows us to leverage great relationships over the years, like a, like a Toro or an EasyGo, just different partnerships that give us discounted or preferred pricing for our partners, our design clients. Go ahead, Raymond. You know, I used the word legacy earlier, and to me, a legacy is about leaving something better than you found it. This also applies to a piece of ground. That's why we love golf course design. For decades, independent market research has said that any golf course, any golf project that uses the Nicholas name is number one in greens fees, membership fees, uh, home value, land value, resale value, or if you're a marketing person, speed of sales, velocity of sales, turning things around quickly. This also applies to redesign and renovation. And we're seeing that same quantifiable success. You know, the National Golf Foundation has said over the last few years that in each of the last few years, there's been maybe 15 new course openings in this country, while there have been over 100 significant renovations or redesigns. Each of the last couple of years. That shows you that people are trying to reinvent themselves, reimagine themselves, and create a renaissance. And that also means you've got to keep up with your competition. You can't, if you've got a great product, you can't just sit there and rest on your laurels. We have a project outside of LA. It's not up here, but it's called Sherwood Country Club. A lot of stars there, Sean Connery, Wayne Gretzky, all these people, it's already successful. The year before we went to renovate it, um, they had sold seven memberships and lost eight. Then in the nine months after the renovation was open, they added 60 new members, they're sold out, and they were able to increase their membership fees by 20%. That's impact. Now at Banyan K, which John mentioned, we took a 50-year-old Trent Jones golf course that had been redesigned by Trent Jones II about 10 years ago 
totally redesigned it, and in that envelope, created a brand new golf experience. The result, when it opened in November, they're ahead of projections in membership sales and pricing. Raymond? Trump, uh, John mentioned it. We put this up here because we worked on this as a team. You can see all the awards there. Took a solid waste landfill, an eyesore to the Bronx and to the city of New York, and totally turned it into a source of pride and green space. And great views there. Whitestone Bridge, Manhattan skyline. Raymond? mentioned Naples. Um, this golf course actually was one that, uh, albeit iconic, it was tired. It was first opened in 1946. John, I think you might have hit the Anarco tee shot, right? Uh, but I know that coat was there. But, um, <laughs> was but we that? took it, yeah. <laughs> we took it, renovated, redesigned it with John, and now they have tripled their fees, tripled their re revenues. That is measurable impact. Cool thing is that's where Jack first broke 40 when he was age 11 with a double bogey. Royal Palm right up the road here. We mentioned this because when we were called in about 15, 16 years ago, they actually had more members dying each year than they had joining. That's scary. We came in there and you can see the numbers and the success has been incredible. We actually had CNN International come and use this as a profile of the impact of renovation and redesign. Okay. Bears Paul, I'll let you read through this because you got the, the handout, but one of the things, and this was just done over the last year, so they were an award winner as far as a renovation of the year, and they've increased their revenues by 40%. And this is one that already was sold out on memberships because it's tied to housing. But there are ways you can impact a project in all the measurable ways, and that was one of them, okay? I'd say one of the things you would think, it, it, Jack just turned 78, I don't mind saying that, um, but he, uh, you would think he's the most traditional guy out there, and in some ways he is, but he's also a man who believes in innovation, thinking out of the box, looking at alternative ways. The game of golf is constantly trying to reinvent itself, get new people in and keep them in. And this is a great example of what he did. He did an 18-hole championship course at Red Ledges, but he also did a complimentary 12-hole par three course where he expanded the turf area so it's almost like a walk in the park, ergo 12-hole golf park. It's a signature golf park there. Use greens that the ball would feed to the hole. They use a regulation hole. I would always play the one that's twice as large. I need the help. But it's a fun experience. And now you've got people walking their dogs, playing frisbee, playing soccer. It's one of the most popular um, attractions out at this property. And these are the kind of ideas that we want to bring to Boca National. Okay? And we talk about something that's proud of a golf community. Community is really what we are about. There's so many ways that even though we're trying to create for you a world-class public golf course, that you do not lose sight and divorce yourself from your community. You can embrace your community by being world-class. There are ways to do it. You can, um, you can design a, a world-class or great learning facility. Um, Jack is a trustee of the first tee. We can bring in a chapter for play or the PGA Junior Golf League. We're a trustee of the PGA of America. You know, you talk about community, you've got a program at Florida Atlantic University that's just burgeoning. It's incredible. And we already have a history working with the, the men's golf program. Coach Angelo Sands has become a great friend. We always look forward to Coach coming up, bringing donuts and great ideas. So uh, we miss him. We love him. But this is the kind of relationship that we like to have with our local universities and uh, in groups. And then PGA Hope, which is a part of PGA of America, where it's bringing military veterans, disabled veterans to the golf course, using golf as a tool to rehabilitate and let them recreate. Jack did a golf course outside of Tacoma called American Lake Veterans Golf Course. It's a 70 year old facility, but it's designed just for the use of military veterans, disabled veterans, with accessible bunkers, greens that allow the solo riders to get up there. It's about bringing them to the golf course. We can do it here with our partners at PG of America. We can also do partnerships with first responders, give them benefits and accommodation. And everybody loves reduced green fees. So if you're a voter <coughs> or local, reduce green fees and make everyone that's coming in from out of state just jack up the price there. No pun intended. With that, we bring you to the meat of it, which is the concepts, the ideas, and the vision. <laughs> <laughs> you ran over five minutes. Okay, all right.
John was having a hard attack. Yeah. Thanks, John. Yeah. 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 Throw things at me. I was ready for this, so I'm, okay. I'm ready to, to speed things up here. And, and now we want to talk about your golf course. Um, obviously, very important. We've got two plans to show you. First, we're going to start with plan A, and this is our 27 hole plan. Um, we, we have the east nine, the north nine, and the south nine. The clubhouse is generally where it is today, located with some enhancements. We have a full golf academy in this plan with, with comp building complex here, full range and, and short game area. What I love about this, this project is it's a wonderful golf site that we don't always get in South Florida. It's got sandy soils, a low water table, so drainage can be, can be awesome. Um, and it's got some elevation change. We're used to flat ground in Florida. It's got some elevation change already. So wonderful piece of property. All three of these nines, I don't have time to get into any specifics, but all three of these nines will have five sets of tees playing as short as 2,000 yards per nine or about 4,000 for, for an 18 up to 3,600 yards or 7,200 per 18. Um, <clears throat> One thing that I want to point out is we have about 35 or 40 percent of the of approximately 200 acres will be unirrigated native grasses. So, you know, we need to be sustainable both environmentally and economically. These native grasses will be, will be unirrigated so they'll stay thin, they, you won't lose balls in there. So, you know, we've got a, a project with sustainability, with less water consumption, less fertilizer use, chemicals, inputs in, in general. 100% um, continuous cart paths throughout the whole golf course, so total accessibility for everyone. Um, Maintenance-friendly bunkers. Back to the sustainability thing. We, you know, labor is 60% of the maintenance budget, so we want bunkering that's, that you we're able to maintain with, with machine equipments, reduce those labor costs, keep it economically sustainable. I mentioned the golf academy. Um, one of the important things is we know that the, we're going to use the existing maintenance facility and currently I believe the access is through the neighborhood. We want to change that and bring access through the golf course to the maintenance facility and take the pressure off the neighborhood. Um, at the clubhouse, as I mentioned, it's in the same general location um, and what we've done is we've created a, a nice uh, small lake here where you look out from the back of the clubhouse across this water body to the finishing hole. That's plan A. What I'm really excited about is Plan B. Plan B is, is special. The, the west side, these two nines that I just described basically stay the same. There's not a whole lot of difference. What's unique and really special about Plan B is the east side. And what this is, it's the, it's, we've changed this from a nine hole course to a grow the game facility with a branded golf village. Brian will talk about the golf village in just a second. But basically, you heard, you heard Scott's description of that Red Ledges golf park. What we have here is a similar facility, 14 holes, par three, very family friendly, easy to play, fun, big holes, so forth and so on. Uh, and also a short game area and then a super range with a putting green and a putting course and a satellite maintenance facility. So that's, this is a grow the game facility introducing people to the game of golf and allowing them to transition onto the championship course. With that, I'm going to let Brian take over from the golf time do we have? Um, seven minutes. Seven minutes. minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, so very quickly, as a golf course amenity <laughs> designer, uh, it's all about the total experience. Uh, I'm a golfer. I'm one of the few golf uh, amenity designers that actually gets out to the golf course. Um, working with Nicholas over the years, in fact, uh, uh, our firm actually designed the Nicholas home in Florida, so that sh goes, uh, shows you the roots uh, going back all these years. Um, but the vision for this site is beyond the golf course. It's what we can do in kind of a, this urban renewal opportunity by calming the traffic that is coming uh, down Northwest 2nd and the extension of Clintmore Road. Uh, traffic calming ideas working with Jonathan and his team uh, with the landscaping, the pavers, the, the activity zone that can be here. Uh, you know, Scott mentioned ice cream, uh, a great place for an ice cream shop right there at the intersection in this new golf village, uh, the local market. When we talk about walkability score, that is what all urban renewal is about these days. 
is getting people out of their homes on the pavement, coming down to a common interest area to partake of everything that we have to offer. And we, we list many of them there, but um, uh, this is really the heart and soul of what could happen uh, in, this, in this whole plan. It's something that, that we really, uh, as a team, are excited about in redeveloping, not only for this neighborhood, uh, but for all of Boca. So uh, I'm gonna turn it back over for Q&A. We packed a lot in there. Well, yeah. I'll start. Um, let's start with just uh, the Nicholas name and design and all that. We're, we're looking to satisfy the need for a community. It's municipal, it's not um, you know, multiple countries or anything like that. How can we afford you and what is that? I'll just say that Jack believes that no matter how much land someone comes to us, no matter what their budget is, the onus, the responsibility is on us to bring them a golf experience. So we are always able to amend, adjust our fees, work out something that makes sense for the client, and we would do that here. Uh, we want this, and um, we will not let price get in the way of us getting this opportunity if you would choose us. But do you think we could make it affordable for the community? I mean, we have, yeah, absolutely. That's our whole mission. Absolutely. I think John hit it, and I'll, I mean, that's his area, but sustainability, and that's all part of it. Yeah. So. I, I live at the North Palm Beach Country Club, and the beauty of what the success we've had in North Palm Beach is that 60% of the play is from walk-in play, affords a local resident a very affordable experience on the signature golf course. It's, the numbers are uh, staggering. So in part of your presentation, you said you suggested the <coughs> revenue growth and all that, which is you know desirable from a financial feasibility standpoint, but not desirable if you're trying to play the course and you don't have you can't afford it. So that's good. We appreciate that. But what additional, then it's kind of fighting with all the people who want to play the course. Um, what do you, uh, what's your experience as far as volume of outsiders coming in as an attraction? Um, I would say that, I mean, that's a, a management company um, decision. But, you know, in working with Boca and everyone else, you would see what kind of balance you want between the locals and outside play. North Palm Beach went through the very same thing. You had residents that were fighting it, and now they embrace it because you create that balance. You, you determine how much outside play, how you want to structure it, um, tee times based on locals versus outside play. Um, uh, that just comes down to once you realize who your audience is and what the product that you're offering them. But you can definitely create a destination location here mm -hmm. with the golf village and the brand. People will travel for the brand. And, uh, we have a we have a great um, scenario out in Anaconda, Montana, which is an old mining town that people had you know left because they lost jobs. Um, they did a municipal golf course there, and uh, Troon manages it. So it's it's done by one of the, the top facilities or management companies, and it's been tremendous. And it's a twenty five to thirty dollar resident green fee, you know, maybe forty dollars on weekends, maybe fifty. Uh, and then they make some money on the outside, but uh, it's been going since 1997, and it was the best new public golf course in the country when it opened. So, uh, and it's a signature product. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just blown away. Um, I like the idea of the golf village, but I think we're going to have. To, uh, would you be willing to have charrettes with the residents of our community? Absolutely, that's exactly what we did in North Palm. We're in the process of designing a new clubhouse for the signature golf course. And we had a year's worth of uh, input from the local community with uh, open charrettes. And we also involved the Trader Coast Regional Planning Council in that, that, that whole redevelopment concept. So the, the golf course and the clubhouse are the stimulus for redevelopment. And I, I would add that we just we just went through this with Martin County on their municipal golf course in Stewart, mm -hmm. and we spent about almost two years doing design workshops and charrettes with the public. We also did it up in New York City for the, for the Ferry Point project, as you saw. Well, it's important. Uh, we have a lot of our community here, and um, I, I know that they're going to want to have some input. Do we want to hear? And it's a fun process. It really is. It, 
we believe in a collaboration. This is we're not designed for our egos, Jack Nicholas's ego, or anything. This is to service you. That's the end, end game is to provide your product that services your needs. And in this case, the client is the community. I noticed in your perspective, you mentioned uh, several different uh, options. That, uh, sure. You have a Jack Nicholas uh, signature course, a legacy, and uh, Nicholas the second uh, signature course. What's the difference in those uh, presentations? It's usually it's uh, it's fee based, uh, involvement based. Um, let's just say we exercise a lot of flexibility, but there are certain markets when you go around the world that just don't warrant. Um, you know, I would say a Jack Nicholas signature. Course. You know, it's maybe it's a new emerging market that just needs a Nicholas Design course, maybe just to introduce a game of golf. So it all it's based on market, demand, budget, um, but that those tiering gives us the flexibility to respond. We don't have one product offering where we said, well, well we priced ourselves out of the mix. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I should I see? No, I'm good. Okay, good. Gentlemen, thank you very much for the exciting project.